Oh, so, oh. I knew something like that was gonna happen when I do something stupid and crazy. I uh, know you're real stupid and crazy, but just a little bit different, I guess. So what I have is a secant squared of x um, times the one minus sine squared of x. So whenever I see you know, a squared, I always like to think of my trigonometric functions, which I've kind of already said three times in a row in other videos. So it's, to me, it's getting redundant. But I want to make sure, how can I transform this? So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite our Pythagorean identities to see how I can rewrite one minus sine squared of x. So remember that the sine squared of x plus the cosine squared of x equals 1. So therefore, if I was going to solve our, or just to get the, the one sine squared of x, I would subtract sine squared of x on both sides. And now, since they're not like terms, I can't combine them. But I'll get cosine squared of x is equal to 1 minus the sine squared of x. So the Pythagorean identities are very helpful when we can transform them. Because now, rather than writing the 1 minus sine squared of x, I can just simply write cosine squared of x. So therefore, I have secant squared of x times the cosine squared of x. And then lastly, what I'm going to want to do is use my reciprocal identities. So therefore, the secant squared of x, I can rewrite as 1 over the cosine squared of x times the cosine squared of x. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply these across and make sure I remember that the cosine squared of x over there is in the numerator. So now when I multiply them across, I get the cosine squared of x divided by the cosine squared of x, which we know is going to equal 1. So therefore, the simplified, ex um, simplified expression is now going to end up with 1. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you simplify a trigonometric expression. Thanks.